Thanks for joining us for our video series on crop marketing. I'm Jim Minter, director of the Purdue Center for Commercial Agriculture, and joining me is my colleague, Dr. Nathan Thompson, who's an assistant professor of ag economics here at Purdue. Today, we're gonna to talk about the importance of crop basis when marketing grain. And you know, Nathan, if you think about it, there's a lot of different ways to price grain today. Things have really changed in recent years, and you might highlight what some of those ways are that we, uh, a little more than the, just the traditional. That's right. So uh, we have a, a, a number of different kind of uh, tools, we'll call them here, that, that are available to, to the farmer to uh, uh, market their grain. By no means is this list all inclusive, but uh, it gives us a, a, you know, a good starting point. So, you know, we have our traditional spot or cash price forward contract. These are tools that a lot of farmers that we work with are, are pretty familiar with. Uh, maybe up a rung from there, you know, hedging with futures and options, uh, allowing us to kind of use the board of trade to protect uh, at least that futures price component. Uh, the hedge to arrive contract, again, we're, we're using uh, the board of trade futures, uh, but uh, the merchandiser is, is uh, taking that position on behalf of the farmer, so to speak. And then, you know, we, we talk quite a bit about uh, the, the growing number of uh, kind of specialized or customized contracts that, that all these merchandisers are offering. And so, you know, there's a plethora of those available. It seems like there's a new one every week almost. Um, but really the, the point here that we want to make, I think, is that regardless of kind of where we're looking uh, on this list, you know, in order to make a decision, in order to kind of pull the trigger uh, on, on selling some grain, uh, regardless of what tool you want to use, you need to have some knowledge of basis, right? Uh, all of those have an aspect that we need to either understand or evaluate the basis bid that underlies it or understand uh, you know, when we want to set the basis uh, for that particular tool in terms of the timing, right? Yeah, so using any of those tools requires some knowledge of basis or at yeah. least you'd be better off if you had a better knowledge of basis. That's right. And that requires some local information. And before we move on, let's kind of just talk a little bit about what basis is. Basis is just that local cash price minus the futures price and we can rearrange that equation, very use some simple math there, and derive what the local cash price is a function of, namely the futures price plus the basis. And when you break that local cash price into its two component parts, that's pretty powerful because now you can actually separate the decision on when you want to set the futures price and when you want to establish the basis. And that's really important for risk management, really enhances our opportunities to improve returns relative to setting them both simultaneously, which is what you would do if you're establishing the cash price by itself. That's right, yeah. It, it just opens up the flexibility, right? So uh, we know that uh, uh, futures prices as well as basis follow seasonal patterns, and we're gonna be talking about that in this video series. Uh, but those patterns aren't the same, right? And so when we split those two components of the cash price uh, apart, the futures and the basis, uh, the flexibility, the way we merchandise grain, uh, opens up the opportunity to kind of optimize both of those components, so to speak. Yeah, and this really came about because we started looking at this in detail with one of your students, and we looked at the fact that that seasonality didn't match up for futures prices and basis, and gave us this idea to think about basis uh, more completely and using that as a way to enhance returns for risk management and for, uh, for corn and soybean farmers. So to forecast basis, to anticipate basis, you need some past basis data for your local market area. And I can't emphasize that enough. You need basis information that's for your region, yeah. your approximate market area. It doesn't have to be for the exact elevator that, or terminal that you normally sell grain to, but you need to know what basis is doing and has done in your local market area. That's right. And so, you know, if, if, if we're going to say that basis is an important component of, of the overall marketing plan, we need a way to build that expectation. So the first thing we need is the historical data, like you mentioned. Um, in addition to that, right, having several years of that data is really useful. Again, we talk about these seasonal patterns. Uh, and so any one year uh, may or may not perfectly kind of reflect the seasonal pattern that we expect in a particular region. And so having kind of two, three, maybe four or five years worth of data uh, can help us to kind of average out some of those year to year variations. And so, you know, the local market um, information, having that for, for several years is kind of what we want to start with in terms of building these forecasts. And you don't need daily basis information, but you do need periodic information. So, you know, if you think about it, you know, a weekly or monthly basis data is really what you need. And, and we prefer weekly, but monthly is okay. That's better than uh, just uh, having very infrequent observations. Right. But 
we really prefer weekly basis information and we put together some historical information because we discovered as we visited with farmers not very many people had been tracking this systematically so they didn't really have a good historical basis uh, information for their market region. That's right. So what we did is we put together the Purdue Center for Commercial Agriculture Crop Basis Tool. And you really worked pretty hard on this. So I'll let you talk a little bit more yeah. about some of the details here. Yeah, so uh, like you said, we, we developed a tool in conjunction with some, some funding from USDA. And really the, the driver here was uh, a lack of historical basis data, particularly localized basis data, uh, that we, we could basically use and leverage when we're going out and, and talking about crop marketing, right? When we went around and we're trying to um, uh, do, do some education in this area, you know, we didn't really have any information that we could give the farmers that we felt like we could um, incorporate into what we were trying to, teaching, trying to teach them how to do, right? So uh, we, we compiled the data uh, from DTN, uh, a large ag uh, data company. And so what the tool comprised of is, is kind of four states. So uh, on, on the screen here, we have Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, and Michigan. And the way that we kind of localized was at the crop reporting district level, right? So uh, this is a much kind of more fine-tuned measure than say at the state level, we, we could have come up with an Indiana state average basis. But again, this idea of localized information was, was a lot more valuable. And so the crop reporting district level is where we kind of settled. And so just for some context, you know, a crop reporting district is typically somewhere between nine and 12 counties. So in Indiana, that results in uh, nine crop reporting districts, right? So you can think about it as, as kind of, you know, northeast, north central, northwest, so on and, and so forth. Uh, the data we purchase is, is, um, goes back to the 2004, 2005 crop year. So we're looking at about 15 years worth of historical data. You know, you don't necessarily need all of that when, when we talk about forecasting and we'll give some more information uh, about how we think about forecasting, I think in a later video, uh, but, but there's quite a bit there if you wanna go back and look at a particular uh, year and, and kind of pull out maybe uh, some specialized information. So for example, if we're facing a, a drought year, we may wanna go back and look at what did basis do in 2012 to kind of maybe get a better idea of, of patterns under that sort of circumstance. Again, you mentioned, you know, weekly data is what we're working with here. We pull out Wednesday's data. That's based on some research, you know, comparing Wednesdays versus uh, say weekly averages is not really all that different. So we, we went with the Wednesday data. Uh, the data is updated every week. So we have the historical basis information in there, um, which we can use to kind of generate or, or build a, an expectation or a forecast. But in addition to that, right, we have the, the current year's information in there, kind of contemporaneous, contemporaneous uh, basis information that you can then track, you know, what are cur current basis levels in my region relative to this uh, uh, historical average, so to speak. And so that gets updated every Friday morning I go in. And so each week there's a new point that you can go in and kind of see what that, that regional average uh, is doing. Again, going back to kind of the, the local nature. So like I mentioned, it's at the crop reporting district level. The way the tool is set up is you select the county that you're in and you automatically get aggregated back to that crop reporting district. That's just kind of for, for ease of use, but I think it's important to clarify that, you know, even though, for example, where we're at here in West Central Indiana, we would select Tippecanoe County. We're not getting Tippecanoe County specific basis. We're getting kind of West Central Indiana uh, regional basis. And so that, that's kind of the basic structure. Uh, and again, the tool is available at the Center for Commercial Agriculture uh, website. Uh, there on the, the home screen, there's a, uh, a button that will take you straight to the, the crop basis tool. Yeah, so I think it's also important to think about the fact that when you look at uh, that basis data information, uh, the fact that it's not your individual elevator, You've done some uh, statistical testing to look at that, right? So as, as you look at the patterns are what count here, and the pattern at that crop reporting district level matches up very closely with individual elevators, although the level of basis might differ, but the patterns are very, very similar. That's right, and, and we, we get to that a lot whenever I go and talk in a particular uh, part of the state that maybe has an ethanol plant is a really good example. You know, the ethanol plant's always gonna have a basis bid that's say 10, 15 cents stronger maybe than the regional average as a whole. Uh, and so to your point, you know, what, what we find, uh, and again, this is a little bit of a thumb rule, but you know, if that ethanol plant is 15, uh, 10 to 15 cents higher than that regional average at a particular point in the year, it typically stays, you know, regardless of pattern, that, that difference will remain. And so you can kind of use that as a little bit of a, a back of the envelope uh, way to generate a forecast maybe for that particular location. Um, and, and that tends to hold true pretty, 
pretty, pretty commonly. Yeah, good point. So again, uh, the tool is available at the uh, Center for Commercial Agriculture website, which is just purdue.edu slash commercial ag. And as you pointed out, it's right there on the slider on that home page, and you can uh, click on it uh, and explore the tool. And in another video, we're going to explain a little more detail how that tool actually works and how you can use that to forecast basis. So with that, uh, thanks for joining us. And on behalf of the Purdue Center for Commercial Agriculture, my colleague Nathan Thompson, I'm Jim Minard. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.